Hi, Bernard. Next Hi, video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we left off last time with issues uh, in Windows Admin Center. Could you fix it is the question. Yes, I could fix it, of course. And it was it was not too long, so we could uh, let the video run. But anyway, we stopped it. So uh, we had only a Hyper-V cluster, not a storage basis direct cluster. There was no volumes and drives here. So what did I do? I kicked out the cluster and the node out of Windows Admin Center here. Mm -hmm. And um, when I re-entered them, the problem was still there. So I kicked them out again, and then I restarted the Windows Admin Center service. And that helped. When I then re-entered the nodes, everything went fine. So uh, it's a quick fix, but you never know if you have to reboot the machine or whatever. So now we see our volumes and our drives. Mm -hmm. And when we look at drives, we see uh, we don't have too much storage here. It's about eight terabytes or 7.8 terabytes. Should be enough for our demo environment to provide some some mm -hmm. space for our workload. And now we go to volumes and we have a two node S2D cluster. So we will provide at least two volumes. I go here mm -hmm. and can click on create. We already see the cluster performance history volume and now we create two new ones the name doesn't really matter because we use shares and the shares have uh, mm -hmm. other names we come to shares later but i like to give some useful names and we can we can talk about if csv1 is useful or not but uh, i do it anyway and now we have to decide for the resiliency so in a two node cluster we have three possible resiliencies a pure two-way mirror, a nested two-way mirror that is, in essence, it's four copies, or we could go with a nested mirror accelerated parity. Um, Bennett, what, which one should we take? Well, for me, two-way mirror is good. Yeah, and it's all virtual artists. These virtual artists, again, have three copies uh, because mm -hmm. they are placed on an Azure Stack HCI volume with a three-way mirror, so I, there should not go too much wrong. So we do that. And um, you told me that in Azure, um, mm -hmm. we are we are doing this for the workload of a user profile disk. And in Azure, it has 30 gigabyte, you told me, by default. So yeah. I choose 300 gigabytes. And we could place 10, let's say 10 here. Oh? And we if can. If the AVD, AVD users would go to the max, uh, that would be the correct calculation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we can. At any time, we can extend this volume if we have still uh, space. So we start with 300 gigabytes, and I do two volumes. Um, the reason for that is if you only have one volume in your two-node cluster, um, all the user profile is so all your virtual machines will talk to the one node that is owner of the CSV. So the mm -hmm. other node is just there for standby purposes. And we have two nodes, we want to share the load. So we have to create at least one volume per node. So two nodes in our cluster, so two volumes. Yeah, to, mm -hmm. uh, to spread the load a bit over the nodes. So we do the CSV2, two-way mirror, again, 300 gigabyte, go to create. And it will take a bit, and we can already change to the failover cluster in one of the machines. Oh. Or I can also add a, a failover cluster here. Yeah, this is our failover cluster for our Azure Stack HCI host, the hardware. But mm -hmm. we can also add connect to cluster our S2D. One cluster was it, right? Mm -hmm. Not with two R's. And then we have a little bit of a bigger window here. So instead of doing it in a virtual machine, we are doing it here. And you see now, if you go to storage, to disks, we have now our three disks. And here you see the owner. Uh, the cluster cares about it that at least one volume is pushed the ownership push to another node. 
Yeah. Okay. So, okay, we are done here. We have our uh, S2D cluster. It has mm -hmm. volumes. So now we have to install our high available file server. Yeah, this is not a Hyper-V cluster, our two node S2D cluster in virtual machines. It's a high available file server. So we mm -hmm. go to roles here and we have configure role. And of course you can do that with PowerShell, but uh, I like the GUI way, so we do it here. So a cluster can have different workloads. It's in Microsoft, the cluster is not only for Hyper-V virtual machines, we can also have file server clusters, we can have an iSCSI target server. So there are so many things that a cluster can host. Most mm -hmm. of the time it's virtual machines, but sometimes it's also a file server. So I, mm -hmm. I click at file server here, Yep. Go to next, and the cluster checks if the file server role is installed installed on the nodes, so it's there. And then mm -hmm. we have two kinds of high available file servers: a file server for general use. So this is a this in, is in essence a normal file server that has any options you can do with a uh, with a standalone file server. Like uh, you can do quotas, uh, you can give the users the possibility to restore deleted files and so on. Mm -hmm. And we have a scale out file server. And mm -hmm. the scale out file server is purpose built for special applications. And the special applications are Hyper-V, so Hyper-V mm -hmm. VMs stored on these uh, on these shares or SQL databases, or I think also internet information server is capable of this. Mm. And of course, user profile disks. User profile disks are like, like VMs. They have a VHDX file and this server, this kind of file server is really built for Hyper-V workloads. Mm -hmm. So we choose this one, but mm -hmm. be, be aware, we have, now there are some features missing. We can't do quotas. We can't mm -hmm. do DFS replication and so on. This is only uh, for... Um, so it's not meant, yeah. So it's not meant for you know for uh, for a generic file server which hosts documents you know uh, that are to be shared among in uh, in an enterprise, right? So that would be the uh, the generic file server. Uh, yeah. The technical difference, though, is you know we have disks attached to each individual node and replicating the disk traffic over the network, whereas the generic file server you would use for sharing documents within your enterprise is requiring a shared storage. That means uh, the disks need to be seen by, you know, both disks. So you need to have a shared disk, which you could do with VHD sets, but uh, that's a little bit of a different topic. I don't want yeah, to get VHD really into sets, <laughs> yeah, VHD sets are great. But yeah. they have some they have some um, yeah, challenges how, when it comes to backup. Challenges <laughs> to backup. Yeah, and yeah, another okay. thing, um, I have customers who place the two VMs of these uh, storage spaces direct cluster in different clusters. Mm. So if what, the base cluster has a problem, in our case, we have it on the same cluster on our uh, Azure Stack HCI 4 node cluster. But you could also, because it's VMs, all the storage mm. is local to the VM. You could put one of those VM in one cluster and another mm. VM in another cluster. With right. the um, general purpose high available file server, they have to be in the same cluster. It's another. Right. So the the VHD set is can only be in the same cluster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now you see here, he, it asks me for a name. Mm -hmm. It doesn't ask me for an IP address because we will generate a computer account in the AD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, it will generate a computer account and we will have an error here. On uh, We know that this error will be there, but I wanted to show it. But we don't specify IP addresses. These scale out file server computer uh, account inherits the IP addresses of the underlying S2T nodes. Yeah, we will see that um, mm -hmm. later. So I create it. It gives me some information. And then we will see here we have our ZOFs and it will fail. Uh, and that mm -hmm. is expected. Uh, I wanted okay. to show you that it fails our our viewers. I know you know that, Bernard. We have done this multiple times, but this is important. So I I go to our domain controller. 
let me choose the domain controller here. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it fails is, oh, I have to log in. Give me a moment. Maybe you know the reason, Bennett, and can enlighten our... Yeah, so from what I recall from your domain structure, it's like you are putting the resources into a special organizational unit. It's not under the computer's uh, OU, which is the default one, right? So you are placing it into a different organizational unit. And um, yeah, um, it's the, a permission thing, right? So the cluster which you have been creating, the, this one, may not have the permissions for this organizational unit. Exactly. So I'm not, yeah. So I go here. Because the cluster node is creating uh, this, uh, this computer, uh, account. computer account and it doesn't have the permissions, like you said. So we have to give it the permissions here on the mm. OU. So you see here, I have another cluster here for backup purposes uh, in our videos. And it mm. has the permissions, but there's mm. no S2D1 cluster. So we have right. to add this. Yeah? So first, mm. usual error I do, I forgot to <laughs> tick the computers here, S2D1 cluster. Mm -hmm. And now we have it here, and now we have mm -hmm. to give rights. Full mm -hmm. control is not necessary. I usually go with create child objects and delete child objects, but you can also use more specialized uh, mm -hmm. um, permissions. And I know in our last series, you added a permission, uh, an URL to a blog post from Microsoft, what permissions were needed. Maybe you can add it in, the, uh, uh, add it in this video okay. also, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we do okay. Now, this computer account has rights in this OU, and we go back to our machine here. And now, if I click here and say start role, it's running. So if we look back in our on our domain controller and we do a reload here, you see now there is these ZOFs. So mm -hmm. the computer account, it was successful. It could create the account, and now everything is fine. Yeah, cool. So, so if you would do a uh, name resolution for that one, would you be able to, you know, if you do a ping or do an NS lookup for this one, what IP would it get? Ah, it, it tell, uh, okay, it's... Wait, this is a big one, it's too big. So we will test that. It will get two IP addresses. Mm -hmm. So if you do an NS lookup, not a ping, ping would only be one, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. power course local. You see okay. here, we are asking our domain controller and we get back two IP addresses, the uh, 111 and the 112. And these are exactly the IP addresses of the management interface of our two S2D nodes. So, so the one where you, where you take the cluster and client, right? Should be, or is it? Yeah, exactly. But this is the only one that is registered in DNS. So you yeah. see here, this is the first one and this is the second one. I don't know why this window is scrolling. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you see here, the scale-out file server takes the um, the mm -hmm. uh, management addresses of all of the cluster nodes. So there is a, already a little bit of load balancing here. If mm -hmm. we use a share backslash backslash Zofs, Zofs is an abrasion for scale out file server. Um, mm -hmm. it, it asks the domain controller and it gets the two addresses back. And if you ask the domain controller multiple times, you it see will rotate, maybe probably. that it, yeah, it rotates the IP address. So one mm -hmm. client will connect to the first node, the other client maybe to the second node. So we have a kind of load balancing already here. Huh? Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So now what, what do we have to do next? We have our high available file server. It's a, it's a role in the cluster, so it's high available. If one node goes down, it will be moved to the other node. Mm -hmm. but, but, but what would, what do we do with it? I would I try to point, which is on the bottom, you see shares. Yeah, ah, there, this one. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there is only one share in the moment, and we we should not use this one. So you are right. We should create shares. We mm -hmm. will do that. Mm -hmm. So right click on the scale out file server, and here we have add file share. 
So sometimes in virtualization, we get an error here, but now it seems to work because mm -hmm. if this wizard shows up, it should be fine. And now you we need to be have... patient at some points in time. I figured <laughs> out that exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why we uh, talked a little bit longer about it. Yeah. Okay. And if it if it gives you this error, sometimes it helps that you move the ownership of the scale out mm -hmm. file server role to another node and back and forth, and then it mm -hmm. really works. Mm -hmm. So here we have five share profiles, mm -hmm. and forget the last two with NFS shares. Don't use them. Um, we don't need NFS, we need an SMB share for our workload. So we have a quick and advanced and an application. And we know what we do and we don't want to do it, the video to be too long. So application is the right one. And if you look here, we have SMB file shares for Hyper-V. Yeah, and the user profile is that we want to use in our Azure Virtual Desktop series, they are like, Hyper VVM, so like the virtual disk, so we you choose this one. And then we have to specify for our first share which on which volume will it be stored. So we choose the first one, and then we give it a name. And for our scenario, um, we want to go with um, uh, profiles and offices because we will later in another series we will use this high available scale out file server for user profile disk. so mm -hmm. i go with pro file one because we could have multiple ones you see here mm -hmm. there will be another directory under the volume directory and then there is mm -hmm. the, the directory but the share is backslash backslash softs backslash profile one nice mm -hmm. okay so now we see here we can't choose much here we can choose to encrypt the data on the network not on the volume on the network so mm -hmm. it will use uh, encryption for uh, smb3 mm -hmm. but the other things we can't change and this is very important because we want to have a, sh uh, a share that is highly uh, and that has enabled continuous availability so mm -hmm. if one node fails the other node can take over and mm -hmm. just also take the handles, the open files, the locks, and the the, the user profile disks can still be used on the other node. So there is like a failover of the mm -hmm. share. You know? So we want that. in ideal case, we don't want to see anything, maybe a, a slight drop in the IOPS for us for a, a limited amount of time from a user perspective when using it. Right. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. and we, okay. we did that in, a, in an IT camp, you remember, it was around mm -hmm. 30 seconds if we were very evil to the cluster, but mm -hmm. usually it's shorter. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the permissions and they are inherited from the drive mm -hmm. and they are not good ones. So first we <laughs> disable the inheritance mm -hmm. and say, take the permissions over. Mm -hmm. And now we get rid of, for example, everyone. Everyone mm -hmm. permissions is not really a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still, should we kick off the users also? Yeah, kick it off. I mean, we are yeah. using that for different purpose uh, and we'll customize the permissions for the specific use case, which is uh, FS logics for AVD. And uh, we will do the permissions required in that video, right? So, exactly. So we kick off good. every, you know, mm -hmm. we create the volume, mm -hmm. close it. We will get a share here and then I create another one and um, then we are finished and uh, we will test if the shares okay. are available. Yeah, be, oh, so before you before you create the other one, um, okay. I think that that's something that we could do, you know, uh, behind the curtains. I would love to see the share access and maybe you could, you know, move the role from uh, the owner of that share and see if you if there is still, you know, access to the file. We can do that, of course. So, so it was off mm -hmm. and now we already see it offers profile. the profile one. Okay. There's nothing in there. So we should create something here. Maybe we copy something or we create a folder. Mm -hmm. Let's say test and in the folder we create a text document, text, mm -hmm. also test and we say this is our test. <laughs> 
Okay. Love it. I do love it. <laughs> you could maybe laugh about it. That would be also uh, no, okay. No, but no. it's just out of my head. But we do. It wouldn't else. look different from from my perspective. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so we so. will. So we will copy oh. our sys prepped volume in here, and then we can mm -hmm. do the. Uh, the failover. I didn't do it, so this is this is uh, magic. magic. So I copy now data from PKVAX. It's our uh, it's a management machine into the share, mm -hmm. and now I do what you wanted. I reassign the ownership. So what what is it now? Let let's pause the node. Let's pause the node simulating a maintenance window, for example. You want let's to note, pause note, the node. Note, 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 node number two, right? Was it two? It was okay. I, pa yeah. I pause two. I pause two. I drain the rolls. Do you want that? Yeah. So it should go down. Mm -hmm. Which it does. It does. It's going up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, there was a slight. A mm -hmm. uh, slight dump of the IO to zero, and now it's going on. It's still draining. Now it's paused. So if I say get it get it back, it will do that again, right? Yeah, let's see. But uh, before you do that, I mean, let's see if the ownership really changed. So um, I of mean, course. Oh, uh, yeah. here's yeah. ourselves. It's on one now, and we see our profile here. So it. Uh, okay. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And also important, where's the owner of the disk? The disk is this one. It's also one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if I unpause the node, because you know we have now our disk in uh, in storage mm -hmm. maintenance mode in Azure Stack HCI, at least we would have that. And mm -hmm. I think it's the same in storage basis directories, Windows Server 20. I, I want to resume it. Fail rolls back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Have a look here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do it. So let's see if the volume, yeah, if the volume is no, the volume changed to two, and this was really fast. There was mm -hmm. really maybe a slight dump here, but mm -hmm. not really noticeable. Huh? Yeah, um, might be that the um, that resuming is faster than draining, sort of, but. Yeah, anyways, that's cool. Um, so will, is that everything that you wanted to show in this video or do you have something left? No, I'm I'm fine. We have our scale out file server. We can see we can access it in the moment only as an administrator account, but fortunately I am administrator on this machine. Mm -hmm. um, we will uh, offline, we will create another share. It's called Office One, and then we can use our high available scale out file server. Um, uh, in the next video, or we could also turn off one node if you want to. Oh, all good. I mean, I I trust you. Uh, so that's <laughs> you trust uh, me. <laughs> but what is, what is with our viewers? <laughs> you trust me. Love it. <laughs> well, well, go go ahead. If you really, if you, I can't stop you anyway. So if you want to do it, uh, <laughs> feel free to do. It. <laughs> okay. So now it's, it's get a bit confused. This is the cluster we have in our virtual machines, our high available uh, S2D cluster, right? So mm -hmm. now I go to our hardware cluster where our two virtual machines are running. Mm -hmm. So here I can turn off. I don't want to do a shutdown. It's a planned shutdown. The cluster will do, will do nicely, but I, I have to hurry. So I turn it off, right? Where is turn off here? Turn off, plug. Mm -hmm. So it should drop now. You see, mm -hmm. but if everything went right, mm -hmm. it will pick up the load again because mm -hmm. now we have a two node cluster. The second node has to recognize over heartbeats that the first node is gone because it doesn't mm -hmm. wasn't uh, shut down. So when it was shown, uh, shut down, it would stop the cluster service, inform the other node I'm going down, but that doesn't mm -hmm. happen. I turn it off. So now the cluster have first has to figure it out mm -hmm. and then it has to take all, all the responsibilities mm -hmm. So yeah, the heartbeat, you know, is is is, is you know the, the the factor that. So uh, the more heartbeats you send in, um, the sooner it will, you know, pick up that the other node failed, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it it is finished now. Mm -hmm. We didn't really yeah. see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, it was uh, it was sort of picking up and then um, and then doing the rest of the copy job. So from a client perspective, it was only taking a little bit longer, but you know, yeah, it's still yeah. usable. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, and it's a tool. Let, faster, let me do this because this was the sort of additional step. <laughs> okay. Now I start the note again. So you see, you have really a high available solution. It will, it will stop for a while because the cluster has to figure out what's what's mm. going on to to get all the resources that the first node uh, was delivering, and then it will go on. So that's really a nice solution. And okay, there is one more thing we forgot and we want to add, uh, which is. Um, for our uh, highly available uh, scale-out file server, we should do one thing, right? In order to really guarantee that it's highly available. <laughs> yes, that's true, because <laughs> we deployed our highly available scale-out file server in, in an Azure Stack HCI cluster. So the VMs are running in the same cluster and uh, I've even customers who put them in different clusters. That's possible with S2D in the mm -hmm. VMs. But uh, imagine we have, both VMs running on the same node. No, we should go on the roles here. So in the moment, exactly mm -hmm. what we are talking about, both, both uh, nodes of the highly available scale-out files are running on node two of our hardware cluster. So if mm -hmm. node two has a failure, uh, both Ooh. are gone. Mm -hmm. So there is a possibility in a Microsoft cluster to uh, tell the cluster, please keep these two resources apart or together. And we want a part, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we can't do that here in the old failover cluster interface. You can do it with PowerShell, but there is a nicer interface. It's uh, uh, Windows Admin Center. So we go to our hardware cluster, our mm -hmm. Azure Stack HCI cluster. And if you have seen the Azure Stack HCI installation series we did uh, before, in settings, we have something called affinity rules. And affinity is put something together. Anti-affinity is, no, put it apart. Mm -hmm. And we want, of course, an anti-affinity rule so that these two resources are not in, on the same node. We can specify a name here, for example, Zoffs. Mm -hmm. Anti affinity, it's just for us. Anti, it's something anti affinity. Is it right here? No, affinity double is F. double F. Double F, right? And anti, so not together, different servers. And mm -hmm. then we can specify the two uh, VMs. In the moment, we only have these two VMs, so it's right. pre deployed here. But if you have 10, 50 VMs here, you have to choose those. Mm -hmm. Now we create the rule okay. and the cluster will try to uh, put them apart. If you have a okay. two node a hardware cluster, um, it's not always possible because if you shut down one node for maintenance or patching, mm -hmm. it has to put them on the same node. But here with four nodes, it should be not a problem. And you see it already did it. So we implemented the rule and it moved one of the two Mm -hmm. virtual machines to another node. So, okay, cool. Uh, that's important. And this will conclude uh, the installation of a high available scale out file server into uh, virtual machines using storage spaces direct.